Hi everyone, Dory Jones here and Lauren Balunas of D squared and today we're going to talk about the Frank Starling mechanism, which is a concept that's talked about a lot when you're discussing cardiac hemodynamics and cardiac monitoring. And basically what it means is if you're starting with more volume of blood in the heart, the heart will actually pump out more blood. And while that sounds intuitive, more volume in means more volume out, it's actually more nuanced than that. It would be like saying that putting more gasoline in your car means your car is gonna use the gas more efficiently, which is not necessarily the case. Uh, and so there's speculation about whether it might be the case because of the way that the calcium is taken into the heart, which is actually what's causing that squeeze. Um, but in the end, basically what it means is you're gonna have an increase in cardiac output if you start with more volume. And even though Otto Frank and Ernest Starling, they're the ones that were involved in the mechanism, they're the ones that the mechanism was named after, they were actually the first ones that noticed the mechanism. There was a, a physiologist named Elias von Sion, and he was the one messing around with frog hearts, and he noticed this really cool effect. And then Ernest um, Starling and Otto Frank, they ended up doing more research, and they were given all the credit, but it actually was not their initial idea. So, so let's jump in. We'll start with the heart as we usually do, and we'll zoom in on the left ventricle. At the end of diastole, which is when the heart is at rest, there's going to be a certain amount of blood in the ventricle to be pumped out. That is called end diastolic volume, or EDV for short. And an increase in EDV also means an increase in preload, which represents both volume and pressure. When the aortic valve opens, the left ventricle pumps blood into the aorta and ultimately out to the rest of the body, and this amount of blood is called stroke volume. An increase in stroke volume means an increase in cardiac output. Now let's review the Frank Starling mechanism. Essentially what it says is that an increase in end diastolic volume equals an increase in stroke volume, and not just because you're starting with more volume, but because you have more contractility in the heart which is more squeeze or force with each beat. Let's look at how the Frank Starling mechanism can be shown in a graph. First, we can define the x-axis as end diastolic volume and the y-axis as stroke volume. A typical curve for a person looks something like this. A person can function at any point on this curve. For example, if someone's heart fills leading to an end diastolic volume of 100 milliliters, their stroke volume would be at 75 milliliters. However, if the same person drinks a lot of water, hydrating their body, they would have more fluid in their system. This would cause them to move up the curve. They would have a larger end diastolic volume, for example, 150 milliliters, and a larger stroke volume, for example, 150 milliliters. This follows the Frank Starling mechanism we discussed earlier. When the end diastolic volume increases, the stroke volume also increases. There are also situations in which a person's curve can shift either up or down. The force with which the heart pumps has to do with the amount of electrical activity in the heart. Certain hormones increase the electrical activity and cause it to pump harder, or in other words, increasing the contractility of the heart. For example, situations of stress cause the body to excrete this hormone, adrenaline, which gives the heart an extra squeeze. A person's curve can also shift the opposite way and decrease contractility. This can happen when a person is in heart failure. Their ventricles enlarge, causing the muscle to be rather floppy and therefore less forceful. So that about covers the heart relationship with changes in volume. Stay tuned for the next video in which we explain how both pressure and volume can impact the function of the heart.